some strange people about and people into dangerous sports. What's, what's life worth if it's not worth living dangerously? I'll tell you, longer. <laughs> people into hang gliding, throwing yourself off beachy head attached to a frame tent. <laughs> oh, you need a BA for that, don't you? <laughs> And water ski I tried water skiing last year in Spain. I mean, what a nonsense that is. It's like a rich man's enema. That's <laughs> cold water shooting up your bum. 45 mile an hour. <laughs> oh, here's another 10,000 pesetas. Take me round the bay again. <laughs> I might be empty after this one. <laughs> And bungee jumping. Now, I mean, that's, that's train spotters having an hour off, isn't it? <laughs> oh. I had a popotum on television. Oh, blimey, the stick I got, you know. Don't knock it if you haven't tried it, carrot. <laughs> I had to go down to Bristol and sort them out, you know. They throw themselves off Clifton Suspension Bridge. And, oh, they're very enthusiastic. Oh, it's a very exact science, just Oh, yes. Mm, mm. We get it down to the last mm, mm, millimetre, you know. Mm, mm. Would you like your head to go into the water? Not unless I'm kneeling on the bloody bank, pal. That's... <laughs> oh, there they were, tossing themselves off. <laughs> One of the bungee jumpers was blind. <laughs> a blind bungee jumper? You need some bottle to do that, don't you? It was amazing listening to a Labrador scream at 200 feet. <laughs> The bloke knew when he was getting near the water because the lead went slack. <laughs> Odd people, huh? <laughs> uh, last February was uh, my 25th wedding anniversary. Oh! No, it's quite something in this business, isn't it, really? And, uh... We thought, we'd like to, um, we thought we'd like to do something special, you know? And we were looking through the, the wedding albums and, uh, you know, the group photo looked like Manfred Mann on tour. <laughs> 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 and, uh, <laughs> you couldn't see any of their relatives because of the lapels, you know? <laughs> I was wearing a tie with a knot the size of Anglesey. <laughs> um, and we wanted to do something special. Um, and, uh, we, you know, we didn't want to buy each other presents because, like, after 25 years, you've bought each other most of what you want, really, isn't it? And, uh, I mean, presents generally these days are just a waste of time. You're down to stupid things, aren't you? Like candles, you know? <laughs> bought you a candle. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous, that. <laughs> you haven't got electricity, how useful. <laughs> So we thought we would, uh, we would push the boat out and we'd have a really, really special holiday. And um, what we decided to go to the Far East and we would have a week in Thailand and two weeks in Bali. See? Uh, and that's what we did. And Thailand, I know it has a, a bad reputation for being sort of one of those sort of, you know, sexual orgy things, but it is a lovely island and uh, it's, it's far removed from that. Although we did have to, I did have to take my wife to Bangkok. <laughs> yes, I know, I know. But we had to go through immigration at Bangkok, you see. And uh, I must admit, the immigration officials couldn't believe it. You know, he's bought his wife. <laughs> <laughs> he's bought his wife. <laughs> they charged me corkage. <laughs> <laughs> it's a stupid joke, but I like it. I can like it. <laughs> So we had a week in Thailand, which was lovely, you know, and uh, we were staying in a very nice hotel. And um, every, every morning in this hotel was, uh, they, they, they did Tai Chi. Do you know what Tai Chi is? By... Forgive me. What it is, it's this, it, you've probably seen, it's that very slow movement they do. It's, a, it's like a moving meditation, you know, and you, you see them, in, particularly in Hong Kong, they do a lot of it as well. And, and every morning they were doing it, I thought, well, that looks interesting. And um, so I said to one of the boys, can I join in? And oh, oh, oh. so, uh, oh. <laughs> Fantastic, you know, doing all this meditative Chinese, whatever it is, meditation. It was wonderful, and you've got to be very slow, you know. 
And everybody was watching me thinking, it's a Westerner doing Tai Chi. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I'm the one that gets the wasp. And they're all thinking, this is Western Tai Chi. So they're all really... <laughs> And the teacher comes back thinking, what the hell is going on? <laughs> and I got stung, I got stung on the arm, and it's all swelled up, it's ever so nasty. And uh, I had to go to the clinic, and they rushed me in this, uh, this rickshaw. It's an emergency rickshaw. <laughs> like with a blue light flashing on his head. <laughs> and I got down there, and he was an acupuncturist. I just, and, and I went, what? I've just, I've just had acupuncture from the bee. <laughs> and I, well, you're not putting it in, in there. So um, anyway, we compromised and he sold me a watch. <laughs> and when he put it on, of course, the arm was swollen. And when the, the arm went down, I've got this bloody great watch now. I, I use it as a belt, you know. <laughs> so we had a wonderful week in Thailand. And then we went for two weeks in Bali. We really pushed the boat out. And Bali was, uh, was a very special island. A couple of things happened there, which you won't believe, but I'm going to tell you anyway. And um, what I'll do is I'll just set the scene a little bit, in case you're not familiar with Bali. It's an island. It's in the, uh, the Indonesian archipelago. And it's a lovely island, very pretty. And the Balinese are just the nicest people on God's earth. They really are. It's like an island full of Teletubbies. You know? <laughs> Yeah. All with that Tony Blair smile. <laughs> and, um, and they are fantastic. And nothing, nothing is too much trouble uh, unless you want something. <laughs> and then it's like, it's forever, you know? I mean, manana is lightning to these people. It's like, well, they're all Buddhists, so life's an illusion, so why rush, you know? And, um, and, and the Balinese have their own language. And they have no word for no in Balinese because saying no would upset you, it would disappoint you and uh, they don't want that and they would lose face so they never say no and it, it takes some getting used to really, you know, you, you're in a restaurant, you're saying, um, excuse me, um, do you have any tartar sauce? <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> Um, well, could I have some? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> um, will it be long? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful people, wonderful people. And um, until, until they get into a car. Uh, then they're like the Schumachers. <laughs> well, they nail the accelerator to the floor, I swear it. <laughs> I don't know what side of the road they drive. I, I never found out at any side there wasn't an accident, as far as I could see. <laughs> well, look at what they've got. They've got Buddha on the dashboard, so they're perfectly safe. <laughs> I mean, Buddha's doing this. <laughs> <laughs> and the markets are wonderful. The markets are really special. If ever you go, you must go to the markets. And uh, there's dozens of them. I mean, it's ever so cheap. I mean, it really is cheap. And that, they're into that uh, designer label copying and stuff. And um, it's remarkable what you can buy. Uh, this, is, this is true. For four pounds, I bought a pair of Kevin Klein jeans. <laughs> Kevin Klein jeans. My missus bought a box of Dunghill cigarettes. <laughs> Not to smoke, we just got them at home. It's just funny, you know. And, um, oh, you can buy anything. And I, I went to this bloke and I said, uh, I'd like a watch for my daughter. Oh, you have photo? <laughs> oh, very pretty. Oh, it's ideal. <laughs> but you could buy literally anything. You can buy a gearbox for a Cortina, anything they'll get you. Know, and they sell, they sell snakeskin condoms with the head still on. <laughs> How pervy can you get? You know? And they had boa constrictor size, you know, cobra size, slow worm size, oh yeah. And, uh, and you could buy a snake charmer's pipe as well, in case you got into trouble when you got home, you know. <laughs> like a poor man's Viagra. <laughs> 
we were in this lovely hotel. We were in a smashing hotel, and uh, we had a we had a suite, and we had a like a downstairs. We had this lovely suite with the sofas and the telly and stuff, and then you went up some stairs into a split level bedroom. It was a lovely bedroom, and it really was good. And we'd been there about three or four days, you know, and having a great time. And then um, this one night, it was about 1:30 in the morning, and my missus was fast asleep, and um, and I was watching some late night footy on the telly. <laughs> Oh, very good, very good. No, no, I mean, uh, no, it was footy. You can't, you can't see mucky films in, in Bali, you know. In fact, I was in the market one day and a bloke came up to me and he went, uh, psst, psst, uh, you want to buy dirty pictures? <laughs> Certainly not. <laughs> I'll have a look. <laughs> and he gave me a K's catalogue. <laughs> anyway. I finished watching the telly, you know, and my missus fast asleep, and we got a little tiny loo downstairs, and I didn't want to wake her, so I went into the little loo, and then I came out, and uh, I was about to turn the lights off, and there was a, a room divider here with banister poles, you know, and I was just about to turn the light off, and I heard... <coughs> and I looked round, and staring at me, between the poles, is a big brown rat. <laughs> Red eyes, just staring at me, you know. And then... Um, I'm not too good with rats. <laughs> and the missus hates them, you know. And uh, I said, oh, shoo! <laughs> shoo! Never moved a muscle. Balinese rat. Didn't understand English. You know. <laughs> it understood shoo when I threw one at it. <laughs> thinking, thinking that he would run out from where he came from. But no, he runs under this sideboard in the lounge, you see. And he sits in the corner. And I had a look and he's just looking. I thought, oh, I don't believe that. You know, I mean, you can't go to bed with a rat in the room, can you? And uh, besides, which in the market that day, I'd bought a sarong, one of those cotton sarongs that you tie round your waist. Well, they're very comfortable, very cool, but not the ideal piece of clothing when there's a rat in the room. <laughs> He's not nibbling these nuts, that's it. So I got onto the phone to reception. I said, oh, it's Mr. Carroll. I said, it's uh, room 1201. I said, I've got a bit of a problem. I've got a rat in the room. A yet? No, no, I've got a rat in the room. Oh, a yet. <laughs> yes, I've got a yat in the room. And it's a kin great yat. <laughs> oh, you have kin great yat in the room. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I send someone from kin housekeeping. <laughs> oh, right. So... <laughs> Manana, about an hour later, of course, there's a, ying, a ring on the door. <laughs> well, it could have been a yat tat tat <laughs> And I opened the door, and it was these guys from housekeeping, two guys, and they were in sarongs, and it's like a headband here, and the one bloke had got a big broom, and the other guy had got a dustpan. And they were both holding giant tins of fly spray. <laughs> Um, have you come for the yat? <laughs> yat? Yes, have you come for the yat? Oh, I don't feel it at all, yat. <laughs> we have your tartar sauce now. Come in, come in. So they came in. I said, underneath there's a, a yat. So they, and they couldn't see it. And they moved the sob and it ran out. Then they went bananas. Ay, 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 Basil. Definitely said Basil. Definitely said Basil. What are you doing? And the rat ran into the little loo. And they both followed it. And they were in there. And then all you could hear was, <laughs> And the rat came out from underneath the door. <laughs> Coughing its guts up. <laughs> but not a flea on it. And it ran up the banister poles into the air conditioning duct. 
And I was listening outside the door and I couldn't hear anything. And I opened the door and the bloke was... <laughs> and the other one was sitting on the bog with the lid down. Going, yat in here. <laughs> you what? Yat in here, drowning. Stand up, no, yat escape. Stand up, stand up. Ah! Yat gone. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Come on. I said, look in there, look in there. So the bloke got up and he went, ah, he's another yat. <laughs> Not another yet, it's Basil. <laughs> so the one guy ran off. And he comes rushing back two minutes later and he's got a Balinese rat trap. This is good. It's a square piece of plywood and in the middle is chicken pieces. And all round the chicken is glue. <laughs> you who glue. <laughs> And he sticks it into the air conditioning duct. He said, ha, ah, we'll kill yat. We come back in the morning for dead yat. Good night. <laughs> and I believed them. <laughs> and I went to bed and I put the air conditioning unit on. Well, 30 minutes later, with you who coming through all the ventilators, <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh, oh. Lucy in the sky. <laughs> I'm thinking, this is how Keith Richards feels all day. <laughs> So I thought, I've just had enough about me to go downstairs and phone down to the reception. I said, you have to come and get this rat trap out, it's killing everybody. So the two blokes come back there with all the equipment again, and they go, oh, yet still here. Well, I'm not surprised. Oh, quick, oh, 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 yet. A couple of minutes later, ring on the door. Open the door. Security. Hotel security. <laughs> this is good. He's got a New York policeman's bomber jacket on. He's got the dark shades. He's got the peak cap and a sarong. <laughs> And he's holding a lead. And on the end of the lead is a mongoose. I said, what's that? A hey, mongoose. Kill yet. <laughs> Don't mongoose kill snakes? Yeah. And yet. <laughs> he Oscar. He really good. <laughs> so he gets Oscar and he puts him into the air conditioning. Duct. Well, there's a whole bloody cacophony goes on. And Basil comes out like a bat out of hell. Followed by Oscar, who's still attached to the lead, and then everyone's running around the bloody lounge. And I'm going, shh, 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 you'll wake my wife, you'll make my wife, she's asleep. I don't want to wake it. Oh, okay, okay. You went off, daddy, we thought. <laughs> and the rat runs up the stairs into the bedroom. Oh, and it's, shh, don't wake my wife, she hates yet. Okay. So we start creeping up the stairs, led by the mongoose. <laughs> we get into the bedroom without a word of a lie sitting on the pillow is this rat right next to my missus in that defensive mode they go <laughs> and the mongoose is going <laughs> and they're going <laughs> I'm going <laughs> like an episode of Thomas the Tank Engine <laughs> and suddenly the mongoose couldn't give a toss about the rat because it spots the snakeskin condom <laughs> Boa constrictor size <laughs> And suddenly the mongoose, boom, he's got it you know, And he's fighting this snakeskin con And the bloke's trying to get him off And then these two blokes are going psh, psh, At the rat And the missus wakes up boom. <laughs> and she sees this mongoose attacking the snakeskin condom with his bloke with a crooked hat and black shades. Two blokes going, psh, psh. She turns around and there's a bloody great brown rat staring in the face. <laughs> For crying out loud, will you get a shave first thing in the morning? <laughs> And then, <laughs> two days later, three days later, uh, you won't believe this either, but um, <laughs> when we got to Bali, I noticed that very near the hotel was a scuba diving school, you see. And um, I, I don't scuba dive at all. In fact, I'm not very good in water per se. And, um, I mean, I've sort of, as a kid, you know, I mean, what they used to use me is the brick. You know. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> and uh, I've managed to overcome the fear to a point, you know. I'm not, I, I don't like getting my head under the water and I don't like being at my depth, you know. But uh, other than that, I'm all right. But uh, the missus is a terrific swimmer and loves scuba diving, you see. And I thought, right, 25th wedding anniversary, what I'll do is I'll overcome that fear. I'll have some scuba diving lessons. Mm? And the next time the missus is scuba diving, I can hide behind a rock. <laughs> And when she's coming by, I go, Wee! <laughs> Bought you a candle. <laughs> so this was my plan. And that's what I did. And uh, I lied through my teeth and I went and had these uh, scuba diving lessons without her knowing, you see. And uh, it, it, I mean, it's a very basic school. They, they taught you just about enough to be safe, you know. And. Um, when I got there, there was about eight people to, to learn. And the first thing they do is they give you this skin-tight rubber suit, uh, except for the fact that I've got really silly thin legs and uh, the rubber used to just flap. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you get assigned a buddy. And this is another novice and you help each other out, you see. And they assigned me this Swedish blonde. <laughs> bloke called Eric. <laughs> Six foot two, like, ah, yeah, the beauty, so the funny, ah, yeah. oh, the Jasper with the flappy legs, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> And so they, they teach you how to scuba dive. And the essence of scuba diving very, is very much in the breathing. You have to breathe in slow and breathe out slow, because if you breathe in quickly, uh, what happens? You go up very quickly, and uh, likewise, you go, you go down very quickly. And so it's slowly in, slowly out, and then they give you some equipment. You've got a knife and you've got a slate, you write things on. And you, they teach you to swap uh, mouth pieces, you know. And then, uh, then they teach you all the signs, because you can't talk underwater. And, um, and uh, this means uh, I'm okay. Uh, this means uh, I want to go up. And this means I want to go down. This means things are a bit iffy. And this means I'm dying. <laughs> so, come the day, we're going to go scuba diving for real, you see, in the sea. And, um, and my missus wants to go on this island trip and a boat thing and, uh, and I have to lie through my teeth, say, I'm ill, you see. And uh, so she's very disappointed and off she goes. And, and I thought, well, it'll be worth the wait when I give her that candle. So <laughs> I went out and uh, went down to the, the dock and then we're in the middle of the sea. OK, we're in the middle of the sea and we're going scuba diving for real. So I'm a bit nervous. But uh, not only that, and this is a speciality of this school. And in fact, this was on one of the holiday programmes a while ago. Uh, they feed sharks. For real, they feed sharks, they, and uh, you know, they say it's perfectly safe, you, know, they, you don't feed them, they do, and uh, providing you keep your extremities to yourself, you, you're okay. See, and uh, I just had this vision of my legs flapping when there's a shark, <laughs> and the shark's thinking, mmm, twiglets. <laughs> <laughs> and they tell you that sharks are, are, are very sensitive animals, um, and they can smell blood from 200 miles away. Uh, but more to the point, they can also smell human waste. <laughs> which I thought was far more appropriate. <laughs> However, I couldn't give a toss about the sharks, because, like, what's coming up is terrifying me, because they're going to throw me overboard into the sea, I'm going to have all this equipment, and, like, and I'm going to go underwater, and I'm going to be out my depth, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm scared, I'm scared. But, like, I'm, you know, I've got to do this, I've got to do this. Come on, come on. So, like, bloodoosh, you know, like, ooh, 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 ooh. don't panic, don't panic, breathe in, so, breathe in, so. Come on, come on, relax, relax, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. That's it, good, good, good. Now, open your eyes. Go on, go on. <laughs> and it was fantastic. It was just blue, beautiful blue, nothing else. Until this seagull flew by. <laughs> I'm wiggling around on my back like a wood louse. You know? <laughs> and Eric pops up. Ah, you okay? You, you come down now? Yes, yes, I'm, yes, I'm fine. Thank you, Eric, I'm fine. I'm coming down now. You, you come down now, you're fine. Yes, yes, I'm fine, I'm coming down. You, you, you're good, you come down. Yes, yes, I'm coming. You come, yes, I'm coming. <laughs> so I went down and, and Eric was brilliant. He, 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 was, he was fantastic, he helped me. And I got down to about 20 metres and I panicked. I just went... <laughs> And off I shot. And uh, he managed to grab me and pull me down, you know. And down I went, and up I come. And uh, I'm up and down like Clinton's trousers. <laughs> and then it's like riding a bike. Then I click. And then, then it's fantastic. Then I'm scuba diving. I am Jacques Cousteau, you know. <laughs> and it's fantastic, you know, seeing the fish and in amongst the rocks. 
and, um, and that was great. And then we, then we get to the shark business, which I'm, I'm not 100% happy with, but I thought, well, I'll see it through. And uh, what happens is you sit in a semicircle in the sand, and this bloke's uh, the instructor's got all this bait, and he starts feeding these sharks, and they're about 12 inches, 18 inches, and they come, and they're, they're pretty regular visitors, apparently, and they're feeding there, and, uh, and I'm thinking, well, I'm not so bad, you know, I'm looking at Eric, and he's looking at me. <laughs> And then these big buggers started to arrive. <laughs> and they're four, five foot, you know. And they come and they have a look at you. <laughs> and they tell you, if you get nervous and you, and you get worried, punch them on the nose. <laughs> have you tried punching anything underwater? <laughs> the shark's thinking, oh, pop me on the nose and I'll be away, oh yes. <laughs> and uh, anyway, then these then these really big things started to arrive. I mean, 12 foot, and, and, and I tell you what, the bubble's coming out the back of me. I... <laughs> the only reason I'm not shooting up like a Polaris missile is because Eric's sitting on me flappy legs. <laughs> I'm going to Eric. <laughs> and he's going, no, no, no. <laughs> and, um, and, and to my shame, I panicked. I just panicked. And the mouthpiece came out and it started going all over the water. And I said, and Eric was brilliant. He was trying to get his mouthpiece into mine. And he, get this, he got this slate and he said, put this in your mouth. And he managed to get mine and we swapped out. And I thought, I've got to get out of here. There's a feeding frenzy going on here and I don't want to be part of it. So I took the biggest breath I've ever taken in my whole life. Boom! I shut up like you can't believe. With these bubbles, I'm going at a rate of knots. <laughs> I'm like a sea to air missile. I've got. <laughs> and of course, you're supposed to breathe out, but I wasn't, so I was going faster and faster. And all I could see above me was this bloody big boat. <laughs> it's a big glass bottom boat. <laughs> and I could see people going, What the hell's coming up here? <laughs> And suddenly, brong, I'm stuck on the bottom of this glass boat like a rubber Garfield. <laughs> Are you okay? And then I look round, and it was my missus standing, looking down at me, going, "What the bloody hell are you doing?" And everybody's pissing themselves because I've got this slate over my crotch, and on it is written, "Put this in your mouth." <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>